All right, van camp project. So uh, with a bed frame uh, at least uh, assembled to the point where I know how it'll be, uh, I've brought out a couple of batteries that are gonna go underneath it. So these are my a couple of my Sun and Shine A606 uh, 300. Uh, 300 amp hour 6 volt batteries. I'm obviously gonna use uh, two in series. Uh, I could use a couple of these uh, power save yellow batteries that they have an abundance of but uh, it's just neater to use two of these in series for a 300 amp hour bank than two of those in parallel for the same result. Uh, these measured when I tested them in you know, about half a year ago uh, at 348 amp hours for that one and 365 for that one so uh, these are the best two I've got and uh, yeah, I'm gonna stick to the plan and put them right there. All right, and here's all the stuff uh, loaded up into the vehicle and uh, with a bit of a mock-up of the high current wiring. Uh, so, I've obviously got the batteries and uh, connector box sitting right there. These, I'm probably just going to pull a strap around all this stuff to keep it together and a strap across it in that little attachment there. And uh, I'm going to have the inverter sitting here because then I can just use this as a support for one of these storage boxes and have it kind of like that and I'll get a pretty good use of a space uh, and it'll allow me to allocate some space beside uh, the, the inverter for cooling uh, without having to have just this you know separated area for it uh, th th there's going to be a bit of space in between here which is you know a good thing it's going to be empty so the inverter has somewhere to pump its heat uh, but yeah now all I've got to do is pretty much bolt everything together and install the battery jumper. Uh, or the only suitable wiring I had lying around was some like super super thick uh, old ground wire so everything is uh, yellow and green and perhaps looks a bit safer than it is but uh, it's good enough for me. I know what's what. I've taped half of the wiring red so I know uh, connecting the, these plugs to the giant wires is a bit of a mess but I have bolted them together and it should be very sturdy and I've zip tied a lot around here to make sure that there's no real movement in the actual joint but rather it's in these little flexible cables. So I think it's going to be alright. Now I've just got to wire it up and perhaps we can have a test tonight. Alright, everything is wired up. Put some shake proof washers there. Talked everything to spec. I rated the wire a bit better. Put it through the handles there to just kind of keep it in place. It's pretty sturdy. Still going to strap everything down though. Uh, but that's a bit into the future, but I think we're ready for a first test run. I just checked all the internal brakes of the QDSCC 121,300,000 are on. We've got solar load and battery connected. And I am pretty certain the polarity should be correct. Uh, so let's see what happens. And we've got 12.7 volts. It's booting up. I think we've got solar. It's quite dusky, so I don't, I'm not certain we're going to get any charge this late at night. No, I don't think so. But it does detect the panels there. So that's a pretty good start. So the big question is, are we going to be able to get... Any power out of it? Yes indeedy. I actually haven't tested the tablet on the front. Right, I just fetched my old friend from indoors. And I also wired up the fans. So let's see if they run. I do believe we have ventilation. Can we go into turbo mode? Oh yeah. So that should keep me plenty cool. So let's see if we can heat ourselves up. Ah, oh, there's a clamp meter way down there. So, we're drawing 73 amps, 
And it's getting plenty warm in here. Inverter's drawing air. Connection around the back do not seem to be getting hot. Connection around the battery. Absolutely fine. Connection is on the box. Absolutely fine. Extensions. Everything seems to be working just okay. And what's our battery voltage? 11.5. Granted, that is with some drop uh, from the connectors there, and these batteries haven't been charged in quite some while. So I would be very surprised if they were anywhere near fully charged. They're probably at like 80% yeah, or so. That's heating me up nicely, though. I'm just going to sit here for a while and enjoy the warmth. Load the system down. So I'm measuring around for voltage drops in the system, so let's check the positive lead from the inverter to the battery positive, and we've got 0.212 volts at 70 amps of load, so that's absolutely fine. And negative lead of the inverter to the battery terminal. 0.2194 So that's absolutely fine there, There's no room for super high power dissipation anywhere with that kind of voltage drop and Let's see what's a drop across the uh, Q, QDSCC 121 million 300 is so we're measuring positive in to one of the positive outs and that's 0.09 volts on the positive side and negative side if I can get a connection 0.1 so most of our voltage drop is in the fuse box so there's nothing in the actual battery connections or uh, inverter connections so that's not bad I do not mind it's getting really warm and cozy in here now I wonder what our actual battery voltage might be Let's check it at the terminals, and we've got 11.887, keep in mind this is under 70 amps of load, and these batteries have been sitting for 7 months, and one bat battery 1 is 5.922, and battery 2 is 5.964, so they're pretty damn balanced and even despite being under load and after having sat for so long. So that's not bad. Oh. That is not bad. Alright, so last night I was uh, connecting all the electrics together and today I've strapped everything down and pretty much given it the final touches. Uh, so, I've moved the inverter back here because it uh, just makes it easier to strap down and uh, I've strapped that down along with the batteries. The batteries are strapped together forming pretty much a solid block and uh, they're not going to go anywhere. I can basically push type a vehicle from those if I need to. Uh, I had a different solution at first uh, but uh, when, I, when I did a very hard brake test the batteries actually moved kind of out that way. So I had to make sure there's some force uh, pushing them towards the fender against which they're resting. And I think this is going to be plenty sturdy. So, beyond that, uh, I have fetched uh, the last of my shelvings. So I've now got uh, six shelves for storage. And uh, I've put a little stereo in there, a little grain separator. My speakers mount uh, up there. These are my the computer speakers, and they just. I built some. Uh, with brackets for them, they just slide onto there because they have this little friction fit mount on the back of them, so that works out quite nicely. And uh, here is uh, where I put my uh, portable file server. So, this is that one uh, new ASUS laptop which I picked out of the trash, and uh, it decided to blow the backlight uh, power supply a couple of days ago, so it's gonna just act as a headless server along with two two terabytes of. Uh, 
and portable hard drives used to be free. So this is just going to be uh, doing server duty, mostly probably going to be streaming music out of it, since I'm going to be having a lot of internet where I'm driving around of this thing. And there's my shelving, uh, eating boxes just fine, and yeah, pretty much everything's good to go. I need to just trap this down a bit harder, it's not really going through any hoops. I also mounted a kind of emergency mounted a lamp up here. This is a 20 watt LED uh, fixture that I've uh, constructed. I also did a video about that some time ago. Yeah, we're getting ample light. It gets very bright in here when everything's closed. It's, uh, the LEDs are kind of aiming that way, so they're shining down onto the bed, but uh, uh, it just has such, such a soft light that a lot of the light is going up in the ceiling and a lot is hitting this reflective stuff here and uh, it, it just provides a perfect little downlight for everything there. I love it, it turned out really great. So, I guess that's pretty much it for the electrics. Uh, the electrical systems for the solar and the actual vehicle are entirely separate. Uh, I don't even think they share the same ground. Uh, it depends on if, you know, something's touching uh, something else and so forth. Uh, here's the stereo. It's connected up to one, I believe, channel uh, 3 there. Yep, and now it's powered on and I could listen to some tunes if I wanted to. Not a hugely powerful loud system, but I don't generally listen to loud music anyway. And uh, got my laptop charges. These are always on, drawing some uh, residual current, but I don't think that's going to be an issue. Right now we're charging at uh, 26 watts. It's uh, kind of late in the day. Uh, not entirely sunny either. 13.4 volts in the battery. And uh, that's pretty okay. I was uh, loading the system down quite a lot earlier uh, yesterday when I was running the heater for probably half an hour and uh, it seems to have pretty much charged up uh, completely since then. Ah. Ah, that's pretty much it. I think I'm gonna wrap that up for the uh, electrics video. Cheerio. Hey, but here's just a quick look at the uh, electric uh, at the DC plugs that you see. So here's the fan output which uh, uh, and here's the remote output. So if the pins on this are shorter, then we're getting 12 volts here. If I just unplug that, then we're getting 5 volts out there, uh, if the fans are on. So, that works excellent. And these are my unregulated 12 volt outputs. And uh, one of these is going to the stereo, the other is going to the light. Uh, this one should be the light, since this is the 2.4 amp output. I should really mark these up, actually. That's better. I have a lot of day turning tonight, and here's what uh, the 20 watt LED light looks like in the dark. Uh, the camera isn't really doing it justice, but uh, you can really see the effect of this uh, mirror aluminium finish as we have sh light shining straight down there onto the charge controller. And even down there, we've got some. And it, when I open it up, uh, the door, so that this one will kind of reflect. Uh, light, uh, I get a pretty, yeah, you're not going to see, but, but if, if I just uh, look at myself like this, I, I can see myself quite clearly. There's quite a considerable amount of light just kind of bouncing around from all directions, and even a fair amount uh, hitting the ground, and uh, several meters behind the vehicle we have light, although this cheaper camera can't do much with it. So there you go, I'm quite happy with that, and you know, if, you, if I want to read something or do something or repair something, I've got ample room and ample ability to do it in here. Uh.